All right, you guys, so y'all finna take a ride with me. We're gonna talk about should you buy a car in the current state of the car buying world as of right now? Like, whoo, I, I, this is, it's a tough uh, decision because honestly, like for me, I didn't need a car when I got a car. I got a car for a business decision, which, you know, at the end of the day, is, is a goal. Like, I wanna expand my business. I wanna do things diff differently. I've always wanted to do car content creation on the platform of YouTube. It's been something I wanted to do for a long time. And way back, if I would have started when I had it, the, the uh, like inclination to do it, I'd have been lit on it because that was the time when the Chargers was just running it up. And it was before the Charger game got all burnt out. Because I was early on uh, Tall Guy Car Reviews and Mr. Organic. I was watching them early. And obviously I was in the tech space heavy at that time. But I've always loved cars. Hold up, we gotta change our mode, our driving mode. You know, I, I roll in my custom mode, which is a little more stiffer. A little, it's, it's a little racy slash uh, sporty for sure. Um, nevertheless, coulda, shoulda, woulda doesn't apply period anyway when you're trying to do something. It's either you did it or you didn't and I did not. So that's my bad right there. But the reality is buying a car in today's market is hideous it's terrible like these dealers are scratching and clawing just to survive right now right and it's it is the messed up part is where do i am oh yeah i'm supposed to turn right here is you get caught in a crosshair in a crossfire because it's not our fault that they can't get cars and that there was like you know a whole pandemic and there's a, a vehicle shortage amount right now like that's not our fault we didn't cause that to happen and you know they got overhead and they're not making as much as they used to they're not selling nearly as many cars as they used to it's not our fault period like i could i could care less how you look at it how you try to spin it it's absolutely not the fault of us the consumer like honestly when you pull up to a car dealer in today's market you're trying to help them out but the problem is they're marking up the cars because of the market adjustment. Okay, one thing. I bought an enthusiast car. I expected it to a degree. I didn't expect it as much as it was for this car, but I expected it. Then there's the second thing on the financing point. This is where my issue comes in and the reality that I went to a dealer with a pre-approval and they literally purposely kind of overlooked my pre-approval to do it through their thing and their way, which rubbed me the wrong way. I'm, I'm going to be honest because... The whole point of me coming with a pre-approval was so that I, wait, I didn't have to go through any of their nonsense and BS. Like, at the end of the day, when you know your credit score and you know what rate you deserve, don't accept anything else other than that. So the second side is the financing, right? They're going to try to get you on financing. They're going to try to sell you all these things. Typical dealer stuff. But the problem is they're a little bit more sneakier and, and, and snakier with it and just nasty with it flat out because they cannot afford to not try to force you the way that they need you to to squeeze every penny and dime out of you so it's like a terrible time to buy a car unless you absolutely need one here's another thing i don't know why in a car world or in the car dealer you know industry integrity is just like nothing like if I were you and I were shopping for a car right now, the number one thing I would look for is integrity, which is going to be hard to find because it's the car dealer industry. Come on now. And it's sad to say it that way. Um, in both of my instances, in all of my instances that I've ever went to a dealer to buy a car, I never just got like a clean straight, like, all right, bet we're going to do it your way type of thing. It's always a yank and pull, a back and forth, uh, who's going to take the bigger half tug of war type of thing man it's always a fight and it's it's disgusting that it has to even be that way and i'm being real i'm being honest with you guys i'm talking to someone who has bought multiple cars from a dealer i bought three cars from a dealer in my little span right the first car i got absolutely ridiculously robbed and and i, didn't, I knew nothing about buying a car i bought this i think it was a 2001 camaro z28 I was young, I saw it had a certain price. You know, I went in there, I did a co-signer, I did money down, and they still gave me like some crazy percentage of like 20% uh, interest rate, which they made a ton of money off of, but I didn't know any better then. 
I didn't even know my credit score at that point in time. Whoa, these cars are about to have an accident. A Mustang and a Toyota going head to head on some ego road rage stuff right now. <laughs> Interesting, a Mustang and a Toyota, mind you. But I had no knowledge about my credit score, how you buy a car, how you negotiate the percentage interest rate. I knew nothing. I just knew I wanted that car. Okay, they got it at a certain amount. I paid crazy insurance. All, my number one focus at that time was get the car and can I afford the monthlies? Regardless if I could or not. No, I could though at the time. Get the car. So I did that. I got screwed. Terribly. Didn't even know it. Paid that car off. Okay, A1. I go to buy my GTI. I got a 2013 GTI before I grabbed this Golf R. Went in there with a 760 credit score, mind you, which means I qualified at that point, 760, you qualified for the highest rate, period. So I believe once you cross 760, if I'm not mistaken, you, you, you qualify for the top rate. So they came in, they come back to me, they run my credit. At that time, I didn't know about pre-approvals and all that stuff. I just went up there, it was Black Friday. I took my Camaro, I was meaning to trade it in. I wanted to trade my Camaro in, not put no money down and leave with a new car. So I pull up, yo, I got this Camaro. Tell me how much you give me for it. They quoted me some low money. I was like, ah, they gave me a little thousand dollar more for it. I really should have got more money for my Camaro. That's where I screwed up. Option number one. Number two, in today's day in market though, selling a used car or trading in, you should get top dollar because they need it bad. The, 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 the roles have switched. So, okay. Run my credit score. I got a 760 credit score. It means you should give me the best rate available. They come back to me at like 10%, 11%. It, I think it was over 10%. I said no. Nope. At this time, luckily, thankfully, I had the guidance of my dad at the time. Pop was telling me like, nah, that's not what your rate should be. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay. I told him no. They come back like 7% or something. Six, like no. Come back at like 4 or 5%. You know what I mean? Nope. Just slowly chipping away. And I'm like... Yo, and they came back in there like I think they was trying to get me at like five percent or six percent. I told them no. Uh, they was like, okay, well take the GTI, the car that I don't own yet, take it home, and I'll get you in word. I said no. I'll take my Camaro back. I'll take my Camaro home. So basically, I left out the dealer with my car, no deal, no nothing, and I went home. They called me first thing in the morning at two point two five percent or something like that. And told me he got it, he got it at 2.25. I came back in, I got the car. I left ahead. He was pissed though. And he was trying to sell me all kind of stuff. You know, when you get in there with the financing person, not only do they like write your up your loan and hopefully screw you on percentage, the next thing they want to do is try to give you all of these insurances and warranties and all that. So I had to fight with him. No, 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 no. Left out of there for what the car costs at a two point, I think two percentage auto loan interest rate, man, scot free. That was the best deal I got. And it was not smooth, unfortunately. Even though my credit worthiness was worth me walking in and leaving with the best rate in and out, not wasting my time. They still waste your time. Hence to me buying this Golf R. I walk in there. I got over 800 credit score. You got, if you watch the video, if you didn't watch the video when I picked up this car, watch it, you'll see my credit score because I show it to you there. I mean, this is kind of personal, but I want to inspire. I, want, I really want to promote people to get on their credit. Over 800 credit score. I have a pre-approval this time. I went to my bank. I told the bank how much I want to borrow. They said, yes, you can borrow this money. Here's the letter you hand it to the dealer. All they have to do is enter in the, the code and information and we'll will approve it through your pre-approval. I sent that letter ahead of time. I told the salesman, do not run my credit. I got a pre-approval, we're doing it this way. He called me back, hey, we need you to do a credit app. It's like protocol, which is technically not true. They do not need to run your credit in order to sell your car. I found this out later after the fact. I fill out the credit app. I'm like, all right, cool. Just, I'm giving you this so that you know that I am who I am. I'm not finessing you whatever even though man i had a pre-approval dude like what are you talking about do not run my credit that's what i told him man they ran my credit i called them i'm like dude why are you running my credit i got credit alerts why did you run my credit so they apologized for that i'm pissed at that point i haven't even went out there to get the car and they already dinged my credit got an inquiry on me i'm mad 
I tell him specifically on coming out, give this pre-approval. He never gave, I don't think he ever gave the pre-approval letter, letter to the financial dude. He just told him run it through because that's who he wants to go with. The pre-approval has a way that they can run it in their system that they use to go through the pre-approval. I get there, I'm like, why is it taking so long? They doing all this stuff. I'm like, yo, what's, what's up, man? They should have had paperwork. I gave them all the information they needed to, like two days before me even getting there. I should have pulled up and there should have been paperwork. Nah, it's taking forever. Hey, we need proof of income. What? Y'all need proof of income? I got a pre-approval. I already gave all the numbers and all the information. We need that 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 was red flag number one. I'm like, okay, we need check stuff. What? We need oh no, bank statements. What? Alright, I'll give y'all the bank statements. Whatever. Boom. I give my business bank statements. I just I just gave them that. Cause I'm like, you know, y'all don't need to here. This shows, you know, the amount of money I'm bringing in, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we need a schedule K or a tax return. Bro, I'm like, why are they auditing me so hard? Like, what? what? What is this? Man, come to find out the only reason I had to go through all of this is because they were running it through their system. So, talking about all we got. Man, they kept me in there all day. They sent me home with the car. I signed the, like, paperwork or whatever, or the contract saying that it should be at this rate, blah, blah, blah. And then I start getting calls from the finance, and I'm like, yo, why are they calling me? This should be all the way through. I had a pre-approval letter. Oh, we, what's your verifying information, like birthday and all that stuff? Okay, all right, it should be good. Call me again. Hey, we need you to verify your income. Like, uh, well, what did you put on the application that the dealer submitted, right? They're just trying to cross-reference what the dealer submitted, mind you, not using my pre-approval, because they submitted a credit app on their own just to make sure it lined up, make sure the dealer wasn't lying, I guess, to sell cars or whatever. You know what? By this point, I'm pissed. I already got the car. I'm at home. I'm mad at their financing. Shout out to the person who I talked to because I'm like, yo, why are you even asking me these questions? I started asking them like, I went in there with a pre-approval. Are they using it? He's like, well, there's a pre-approval app and then there's the app that the dealer did on their own. I'm like, oh, bingo. Now I know. They never used my pre-approval. Even though I gave them the letter multiple times, they did it on their own. They was trying to scheme. And, you know what I mean? It's just that type of process is a lot of times not even worth it so i'm giving y'all all of this straight transparency and reality because that's just what it is i want you guys not to get screwed and messed with one thing i want to tell you guys if i would have did it all over again i would have never filled out their credit app i would have went in there with my pre-approval letter told them to use that or i'll leave they would have used the pre-approval letter i would have got it done way smoother and i would have probably been in and out of there a lot quicker Here's what I want to say. Never put yourself in a position to where they feel like you're just so thirsty for the car, that you're t excited for the car. Never show excitement. Stay even killed. Never put yourself in a predicament where they feel like they have control. My number one mistake was I flew out there with no way to return. The original way I was going to go was I was going to have a friend drive me, which means if they would have started talking buck or doing something crazy, I could have been like, all right, I'll leave. I'll, I'll drive out. But the fact they knew I flew there, they felt like they had control to manipulate the situation. Again, know your credit. Know how much credit you have. Know your credit score. Know what rate you qualify for. Number two, build a relationship with a bank and get a pre-approval. And if you have the kind of pre-approval like I had, which was a yes, not a, even a question, I had a pre-approval for way more than what I spent on a car. So it was a guaranteed approval. There was no need for me to have to verify nothing. I already told me, yo, you good for more than what this car costs. Number one, put yourself in a position where you can leave and you have full control of the, of the whole bargaining situation. Number two, know your credit. Work on your credit. Build your credit. So that way you know your score and you know what percentage rate you're supposed to get so you don't get screwed on your percentage rate. Know the going top rate if you have the top credit and know that that's the rate that you're supposed to leave with. If you got whatever mid-tier credit, know whatever that rate is and that's the rate you fight for it. Number three, get a pre-approval with a bank. Have a relationship with these banks. Do multiple things with these banks, like a credit card. Uh, um, I'm not telling you to get into debt, but I'm telling you to build out and show responsibilities. You know what I mean? Have your money coming in and out that bank so they know, oh, this person has money. This person you know, is doing what they need to do. They're responsible. We can loan to them. So that way, you get a pre-approval letter like what I had, which was a yes already. You don't need to run my credit again. And you go in there and you make them use that. If they want to sell you the car, They'll use it and they'll do it the right way. All of these dealers are trying to come up 
And right now it's uh, it's nasty because they're not making the money they they're usually making. They're not selling. They don't have enough cars to sell as many cars as they used to sell. So they're just like it, it, it it's not in the interest of you. I know this is a long video, a long conversation, but this is real life. This is what it's all about when you're out here and you're trying to protect yourself financially and trying to get the best outcome with these deals. You got to know multiple things. So hopefully I was able to enlighten and inform someone out there. I'll do some videos about how to improve your credit. I'll, maybe I'll do a video like that. Someone asked me to you know, share a video showing the car process or how and what, I, what did I do. So this video was about was supposed to be about should you or should you not buy in this market, but it turned into like you know well, yeah, it still is. It turned into also like a you know how to buy in this market and how you should go about it. So hopefully that helped you guys. Peace. Yeah. I'm from LA to the A on the run. You